Hi. A YouTube user, Bob Bobbins, he found a bug where he gets an infinite loop error when he um, tries to shoot a destructible mesh that's already destructed. And uh, I found the bug and you should probably fix it even if you're not using destructible meshes. And the reason is when we fire a projectile through the hit object and we do our backtrace from here to here, the location we get is actually still intersecting with the hit object just a tiny bit. So the solution is to simply move the exit location uh, a little bit this way and since we already have the impact normal we can do that easily and say it might be coming out here the impact normal will be in this direction so it'll always move away from the hit surface. So let's just quickly do that now go into the uh, compute exit location of the first person projectile blueprint and in wherever we use this location um, how should I reference this? This is just before you do the check for collision at exit location so this is, this is essentially what we've been using for our exit location so far but instead of using this wherever we use it we'll add the impact normal. Just one Unreal unit should uh, should fix the error. So we'll uh, pop that up there and then move this over here and wherever else the location, the hit location goes to. It's up here isn't it? Yep, that's right. Okay, that's that done. Now the next thing I want to move on to is, um, oh yeah, one, one more note, <laughs> just something silly I did here. Uh, this this return, two return nodes are not necessarily needed. We can just uh, delete this whole thing, do one return node, and uh, connect the dots. Okay, so next thing to do, we're going to implement a very, very trajectory function which will uh, make the projectile go in a random direction after we hit or even when we just bounce and so when we bounce it would normally go say out this way but we might want it to go you know here or here and one thing we do have to watch out for is if at the end of when, when all is said and done the trajectory should not be going back into the hit object so we'll check for that um, back here I've already done the very trajectory function the signature is uh, it takes in a surface normal that's the normal of the hit object that could either be uh, this line here if it's a bounce or it could be say this line here if it penetrated and it takes the impact velocity of the projectile and it actually takes in a reference to a projectile object that's really important because back here if we've penetrated we've spawned a new projectile and we want our very trajectory function to act on that new projectile that we've spawned rather than the current one if we if we change the trajectory of this one nothing would happen to that new projectile that we spawn so if you look down in the description I've, I've got an image of this whole function so you can go in copy away. Nothing particularly complex about it I don't think. And um, yeah, pause the video and come back when you've copied it out. And obviously make sure you always link up this projectile reference. You want to change the velocity of the projectile movement component of that and uh, not the projectile movement over here. That ignore that. 
Okay, now once you've finished, you need to connect that very trajectory function up. So let's just pop it after um, after we've spawned a new projectile on penetration. We grab the new projectile object. That's the return value from the spawn actor function. And we need to grab the impact velocity and the surface normal. Got to laugh in the meantime, I actually learnt how to use reroute nodes. Remember, I'm not some sort of Unreal Engine expert. I'm learning this myself too. I forgot which one that was. Was that a surf impact velocity? Yeah. And the surface normal, we, we will need to slightly modify the compute exit location function. We'll just add an output giving us the exit normal. And that will be a vector. We'll go into that one. And where do we get the exit normal from? Um, it will be the same one we used just earlier. And that will go up to this return node. But if we have to do this tricky stuff here, then it'll just come out of that one. Okay. Now that we've got that exit normal, let's... Uh, nice and neatly connected up over this way and what if it doesn't penetrate what if we just bounced in that case we'll grab another very trajectory function and we'll grab the impact velocity The surface normal will come from here. And the projectile reference will be a reference to self. That, that's this whole blueprint that we're currently in. And that should do it. Let's see if it all works. Looks good. And I'll see if uh, after penetration it varies. Looks like it does. All right. Okay, so the uh, the next and final thing to do is implement drag due to air resistance. And uh, this is quite an in-depth in implementation. It could be better, but uh, it's good enough for me. And so I went on to hyperphysics and I found this drag equation. And everything in there is fairly easy to get, except for C, the uh, drag coefficient. Now, there's a, there's a lot of science behind getting the drag coefficient for a, uh, a bullet, but I did, I did find this uh, graph of drag coefficient versus uh, velocity for a few different profiles. And profile refers to the shape of the bullet in question. The most common profile is, is the G1 profile, so that'll do for me. And so I'll just copy the, the gist of this graph into Unreal. I'll uh, go into my project and right click, and on a miscellaneous I'll make a float curve. And call it drag coefficient. And uh, it's just a graph, so I'll go about duplicating the data points, just a few data points, I'm not going to worry about being too accurate of that graph online. And I'll put a link in, in the description so you can copy from the same website. Okay, so I've finished my graph. Just note that I've used a, a value of meters per second on the x-axis here. That just makes the calculation much easier for us. And so if we go into our first person projectile blueprint, I've already uh, done most of the drag function 
and I'll uh, I'll post an image of it in the description. And the way we get our curve float into our blueprint is we'll create a variable. I'll call it drag coefficient. Let me spell it again. Okay. We change it to a curve float, a reference. And then we have to compile it and we'll get to change the default value to the graph we just made. And then we drag that out into the blueprint and drag a line off and use a get float value function. And so we can feed it in the x axis uh, value, which is in meters per second. Uh, so that's the velocity there. And then this is our uh, drag equation here. And then over here we just calculate the, uh, the new velocity after we've applied a bit of drag. And um, this is just all connected to the tick function. And once you've done that, we should be able to see it in action. There you go, it slows down as it goes through the air. And one final, final touch. You probably won't always want to use a soccer ball when you're firing a weapon in your game. So just go into the first person projectile, change the uh, collision component to a sphere radius of something like one, one centimeter. And the static mesh, which is actually a giant, I think it's a, a one meter radius ball we can change that scale to 0.01 for now. And eventually you you might get a uh, you know an actual model of a bullet to fire through the air if you like. But for now that should do. All right. Happy game making.